Hi, my name is Keegan Tawa, and today I'll be updating you on the status of my software project, Pisces. Pisces stands for Procedural Iterative Stellar Evolution Simulation. If you're not familiar with the software, I highly recommend you watch my previous video, which explains the premise of Pisces. In this video, I'll assume that you're familiar with the intention of the software and spend my time updating you on how Pisces has developed and changed since my last update. In the six months since my last update, I've spent a lot of time making Pisces more accessible to users. I've created a system of user interfaces and menus which allow a user to operate with the software in a more natural and organic way and also improve my own quality of life as I continue development on the program. From this menu system, the user has the ability to specify the parameters of the galaxy they'd like to generate. You can see at the top that we have the Hubble sequence, allowing the user to specify the morphology of galaxy they wish to create. Below, they can specify the galaxy's age and size. And to the right, they can dig into the details of the galaxy, which are unique to its type. This brings up perhaps the largest update since my last video, which is that Pisces can now render different morphologies of galaxies. These galaxies are arranged along the Hubble tuning fork, which is a scheme for organizing the different morphologies of galaxies that we've observed in our own universe. The Hubble tuning fork is organized into five basic sectors, elliptical galaxies, lenticular galaxies, spiral galaxies, barred spiral galaxies, and irregular galaxies. It's important to note that this diagram doesn't imply anything about the way that galaxies age. It is simply an organizational scheme. Right now, Pisces can generate elliptical galaxies, lenticular galaxies, spiral galaxies, and barred spiral galaxies. As opposed to six months ago, Pisces was only generating a proof of concept barred spiral. Here, we can see a special type of elliptical galaxy with an eccentricity of zero, also known as a spheroid galaxy. I really enjoy the vertical depth of spheroid galaxies. They really give you a sense of volume and they're easy to get lost in. However, by tweaking the eccentricity of our ellipticals, we can generate a more characteristic ellipsoidal galaxy like this one. Pisces is also now generating lenticular galaxies like this one. Lenticular galaxies are disc-like in shape, much like our own galaxy, but have no distinct spiral structure. Many astronomers believe that most lenticular galaxies were once spiral galaxies, but their distinctive arms have strayed and faded with time, forming a more uniform disk. And of course, Pisces can generate the iconic spiral galaxy. Here we see a barred spiral, which has an elongated bulge at its center as opposed to a uniform spherical bulge. You might have noticed that in all the demonstrated galaxies, elliptical, lenticular, and spiral, there are a number of globular and banded structures formed by the generated stars which did not exist in my last video six months ago. This is because I've finally been able to get gravitational interaction up and running. What this means is that the orbits of stars can influence each other over time across millions of years, resulting in very interesting generative structures, many of which I'm still trying to interpret. It also results in much more distinctive galactic profiles, like you can see here in a comparison between barred spirals before and after gravity interaction. In Pisces, when galaxies are born, they are subdivided into a number of cells. In each cell, there is a discrete density of protogalactic medium. This means that at every time increment, which I usually set to 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or 1 mega years, there is a probability of a star being generated. Imagine that these two stars have been generated. When a star does get generated, we determine an orbit for it based on its position, using a technique I like to call reverse propagation. The orbit is normally distributed around a circular orbit with the radius of the star's distance from center. So while most orbits are roughly circular, it's possible to generate exotic orbits as well, like we see with the red orbit here. From this point forward, at every time increment, we propagate all stars' positions, moving them about the galactic center of mass. In the rare case that two stars ever stray within one light year of one another, they have the opportunity to influence each other's orbits. When this happens, the larger star can nudge the smaller star's orbit to be closer to its own, as you can see here with the purple orbit, derived from the red orbit. What will often result is something of a snowball effect. 
If this gravitational nudge happens to nudge the smaller star close enough, that means that in the next time increment, it will still be within one light year radius and it will be nudged even closer again. Eventually, the two stars will lock into nearly matching orbits. Once two stars are grouped in this way, their capture radius becomes slightly larger. They can capture more and more stars, forming something of a cluster. This is especially evident in E0 spheroid galaxies. These clusters are extremely distinct. In fact, I believe the gravitational model needs quite a bit of tweaking because these structures don't really look exactly how I'd like, but the fact that they were generated randomly and on their own because of gravitational interaction is a really great start. Additionally, you can see some really interesting sort of veins managing to generate themselves, which are especially prominent again in E0 galaxies. These are also a result of gravity interaction. You may have also noticed that many of the galaxies I've shown you today have been different color profiles. This isn't simply aesthetic, it's a result of the fact that galaxies can now age dynamically, which is the next big update to Pisces I want to talk about. By tweaking the age of the galaxy in the user interface, we can invoke very young galaxies, or alternatively, very ancient galaxies. This changes the galaxy's characteristic hue because the average age of the stars in the galaxy are either much younger or much older, depending on the age that the user selects. In this diagram, you can see six different lenticular galaxies of varying age. Below these galaxies, I've pinpointed the main sequence center of mass on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is a plot of stellar luminosity versus temperature. In the upper left-hand side of a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, we have our very young, very bright, and very hot stars, and in the lower right-hand corner, we have our cooler and older stars, which take on a more red characteristic. As you can see, the older our galaxies get, the dimmer and cooler their stars become as they have had more time to age. As these stars cool off, their albedo changes, and thus the characteristic hue of the galaxy changes with it. As you can see, a lot has happened in the last six months. In the next six months, I hope to implement a dynamic timeline so that instead of viewing galaxy at one snapshot in time, the user can manipulate time to watch the galaxy grow and evolve right before their eyes on screen. Additionally, we haven't discussed the solar and planetary views today, because they haven't developed much. My next big exploration will be on the planetary surfaces where I plan on implementing a system of hierarchical detail not so dissimilar to what I'm already using out in space so that the user can get down on the surface of planets and explore. All of these planets have tremendous detail in their backend data which is already generated and is simply waiting to be visualized. I hope you found this update on Pisces interesting. I'll be giving a demo of Pisces on April 1st at Frankfurt Hall for the recurring event Nerd Night, along with a number of other fascinating scientific speakers. There will be tons of cool material and a lot of beer, and I hope you'll come. There will be details in the comments below and a link to my previous video. Thank you.